everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's NAC at Home program. My name is Nadine Heidinger, and I'm the Director of Communications at the National Arts Club. For those of you who are not familiar with the National Arts Club, we are a 501c3 nonprofit based in New York City with a mission to stimulate, foster, and promote public interest in the arts. Annually, we host over 150 free programs to the public including exhibitions, theatrical and musical performances, lectures, and readings. To find out more about the National Arts Club, you can visit us at nationalartsclub.org, or you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you to today's conversation featuring true acting royalty, Dame Judy Dench. Though she and her work need very little introduction, Dame Judy has received dozens of awards and honors, including an Academy Award for her performance as Queen Elizabeth I in Shakespeare in Love, seven Oscar nominations, two Golden Globes, six Oliviers, and 10 BAFTAs. Mm. Speaking with Dame Judy will be John Andrews, a longtime NAC member and founder of the Shakespeare Guild. Following the conversation will be a brief Q&A, so please feel free to use the chat function for any questions you might have. And without further ado, let me turn it over to John. Please enjoy the program and thank you. Judy, are you on? I am, thank you, John. All right, there we are, good, all right. Yeah. Well, I was thinking back as I was getting ready for, for this uh, uh, conversation to the first time we met, and I believe it was just before a performance of Macbeth at the other place in Stratford in 1976. And our mutual friend Homer Swander introduced yeah. us, if I recall correctly. And, and you were accompanied by your daughter, who was just about uh, to reach her fourth birthday, I believe, Fenty. That's right. And, uh, and, um, and then um, a few hours later, uh, we came back to watch what I think is still the, the most amazing performance of that play that I had ever experienced. You and Ian McKellen were just amazing. It was directed by Trevor Nunn, if I, if I recall correctly. Was, John. And, uh, and then I guess it, uh, it transferred later to the... Uh, to the, uh, the, the big house uh, and Stanley Wells was telling me that it didn't work so well there. Am I correct about that? Yes, you are absolutely correct because at the other place, as you remember, it was just, um, it was just like a room and the audience yes. were very, very near to us, <clears throat> not six feet away really. And then um, it transferred to the main house and it was on the stage. And they built the kind of circle, but it didn't. It didn't work really yes. there at all. But then we we subsequently transferred to the to the Young Vic in London, where right. we got a kind of intimate quality about it again. But it mm -hmm. didn't really work on stage. It wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really intended for the for the large house. Yes, and then I guess it went to the Donmar Warehouse as well, and and was it, then uh, recorded. I think yes. that yeah. I'd forgotten that it was there, that it was done. It yes. did. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Well, I, I, sorry. No, go ahead. I remember mm -hmm. during it, <clears throat> Roger Reese, who was playing um, Malcolm, broke his leg. And we had no understanding yeah. in it. And he was in a wheelchair for one of the performances. They said, we'll just make an announcement and we'll have to go on because it was sold out and everything. And I remember at the very, very beginning of the play as Mari Keane and the, and the two other witches passed me um, because um, Griff Reese jones as Duncan, um, no, Griff Jones uh, had to be kind of helped up and and led forward and um as i part as she passed me Mari Keane said it's the lord's production she said <laughs> <laughs> it was rather halting that night we got through yes. <laughs> what was wonderful about it uh, for from the point of view of those of us who were in the audience was that uh, if i recall it was a very simple set uh and you were in rehearsal clothing am i correct no 
just no. just very simple yes and not yes. really just they're all black all of us in black and when and the actors who were not uh, playing at a particular moment were sitting around the circle in, in, on what in, seemed yeah. like fruit crates or orange boxes yes is that right uh, yes yes and uh, the simplicity of it uh, and and the intimacy of it i think were what really made it special and and i suspect that that was what was lost when it went into the royal shakespeare theater that's exactly what it was because yes. the other place you know you could whisper and you yes. could be very very clearly heard in fact we had a huge gust of wind come in under the door at one point and during the sleepwalking and the, and the candles all kind of flickered and gutted and i think a couple went out and so that yes. was quite helpful actually <laughs> yes yes well, that was, you mentioned uh, Roger Rees, and, uh, and I recall his telling me on one occasion that he didn't begin as an actor. He began as a scene painter, is that correct? Or, That's right. That's right. And isn't that rather similar to the way you began your career in the yes, theater? It yes, it is. It's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted, I wanted first, first to be a ballerina, and then after that, um, a, a designer. And so mm -hmm. um, that I went to York Art School and after being at the Mount and, um, and I loved it. And I've kind of never got round to ever professionally designing anything. I couldn't do it now, I don't think. But um, it, it was, you know, just seeing, suddenly seeing, I went to see uh, Michael Redgrave in Lear at Stratford in the 50s and I, uh, I, I was so I was so absolutely taken aback by the set because no curtain went up and down it was just an enormous circular flat plane which revolved and in the middle was a rock that was a throne or a cave or it was so economical and I, mm -hmm. I thought I'll never have that imagination. Um, well, we're so glad that you failed as a, as a set designer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're well, also glad that, uh, that you encouraged Richard Eyre to become a director. Uh, do you recall that? No. Well, he does. We, we had a conversation uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he mentioned that he, had, um, uh, he was performing with you. I can't remember where it was, somewhere in the north of England. Well, who is this, John, again? Uh, Richard Eyre. Right. Yes. And that, uh, that you encouraged him to, uh, he, he had put together a little piece for your company to do. And you liked it so well that you told him that he really should think about directing rather than acting <laughs> as his primary profession. <laughs> So he gives you full credit for that. Well, I'm delighted. I don't remember yeah. it at all. I'm yeah. very, very pleased. <laughs> yes. Subsequently, I've worked for him quite a lot. I'm very pleased. Yes. Well, and, and of course, yeah, the films that he's directed with you, I guess Iris and Notes of yeah. Scandal. And yes. What else have, have you done with him? Um, with Richard. Uh, oh, John. Um, Oh, so many things, <laughs> and yes. I can't remember one of them. Um, That's Mary right. Candle, uh, Iris. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I got, suddenly got locked down, blank out. All <laughs> right. Well, that we 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 can we can move on from that. Uh, you've also worked closely with his wife, uh, Sue Birtwistle, haven't you? Yeah. I'm, Yes, Cranford, was, among others. Yes, Cranford, yes. Yes. Um, we had the most wonderful time. Wonderful, wonderful time doing Cranford. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and yes, Sue was there. But, you, you know, I, with Richard or Sue, you know you're going to have a very, very nice time. And, of you know, course. Laugh a lot and it's going to be very, very well organised. Yes, yes. So important. And... Um, I'm trying to think now. Uh, the next time I saw you, I guess, was uh, was in uh, uh, 1999, 
when uh, we presented the Gilgood Award to you at the Barrymore Theater in uh, New York on, on Broadway. Yes. Uh, you, had, you had just won uh, an Academy Award for Shakespeare in Love. And we were doing and, a review, I think, John, weren't we? Yes. And, uh, and Richard uh, Eyre, of course, directed Amy's view. Right. And he was there to pay tribute to you. Yes. As was David Hare, had uh, written the play for you. And several members of the cast, uh, Samantha Bond, and uh, I think Ronald Pickup, and, uh, yes. and others, and Christopher Plummer. Uh, came to uh, talk about, uh, about your work and how much he admired it. It was quite an evening, as I recall. It was a wonderful evening. And I, and I remember when you received the award, you talked a little bit about your own experience with Sir John Gilbert. And I wonder if you, if you would say a little bit about what it was like to work with him. Oh, well, it was funny enough, I was talking about him just the other day. It was, uh, uh, it was truly magical. And he became such a good friend. And I had gone, I was at the Ovic, and I was uh, on tour with Romeo and Juliet, and I was asked to go to Stratford to be in the cherry orchard with Sir John and oh. M.A. Ashcroft. And um, so I said I would love to go and so I left the company and they went on to their last uh, I mean it was arranged a while before it sounds as if it happened in the middle of the tour it didn't it was organized and they went off um, to do to play in Milan I think and I came back to go to Stratford and Michel Saint-Denis was directing and um, everybody knew each other very well I didn't know really anybody in the company uh, and um, he used to give notes, Michel, at the end of a rehearsal. And he'd, he'd go around everybody and he said, um, he would say very nice things to people. And then he'd get to me and he'd go, and then he'd go on. And I got paranoid about it. I mm. absolutely. Um, but then suddenly one day we did a run through and I was, you know, I was very unnerved indeed. And at the end of the first act, Sir John, he said to me just before we were going on, he said, if you've been doing that for me, I'd be delighted, he said. <laughs> and yes. from that, my, my, I never forget it. I will never forget it. And yes. I thought, that's, that's who I will do it for. That's yes. It. And he was so enchanting. And he used to laugh. I mean, everybody says that, John. But he used to laugh on stage <laughs> terribly. I can remember once he came on after the notices then he got the most incredible notices as Gaev. And, and one critic, one critic said, I didn't feel he was enjoying the caramels enough that he eats. And I listened to that, I thought that's such an unnecessary thing to say. <laughs> but the next night, Sir John came on, he was enjoying the caramels so much that he forgot to <laughs> lines to me. And we were away, we were completely away. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh. Oh my word, how I loved him and how encouraging he was and how funny and how wonderful. Yes. And Dame Peg too. Gosh, yes, I, tell, me, tell me about your times with her, Peggy Ashcroft. That was in, that was in the Cherry Orchard, of course. And mm -hmm. um, she lived very near us in Hampstead. She lived in Frognal and I used to go and see her quite a lot. She used to say, come and, you know, come and see me and we'll have a cup of tea. And she was wonderful. Um, and um, she, she was rather, she was very, well, everybody was quite aware of the fact that Michelle uh, was very critical of me and didn't encourage me at all. And I remember one day she said to me, to think I nearly married that man, she said. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. Yes, yeah. my. Who were the other actors that you've most enjoyed working with? Oh, um, oh gosh. John. You've worked with Maggie Smith a lot, yes. haven't you? I've worked with Maggie a lot and Eileen Atkins and right. Sam Bond. Um, uh, I mean, Claudie Blakely. We, we've all had really, you know, I look back on them. And they're such great 
times to remember, really good times to remember. Um, and of course, sometimes the play is not so easy and you, you know, it's work in progress a lot of the time, I think, in a play. That's why yeah. the theatre is so exciting, because you can get it better. Yes. You know, that's why film is is so, uh, well, you know, I, I there are a lot of films I've done that I've never seen, because mm -hmm. I can't bear to see, and I think, because all the buttons you have to press in order to do something, you know, and the decisions you make, or you and the director, or whoever, and then I look at it and think, that's the wrong button to have pressed. You know, yeah. whereas on stage, somebody can come round after a performance and say what they think about it. And they say, I, you know, they'll say, and you know how it's pretty well gone and they can say and things. And then the next night you could get it better. You could. It's like in Antony and Cleopatra. Um, I knew, which I did at the National with Tony Hopkins, and I knew that in uh, very towards the end of the play, there is a line that I, I can't remember what it is that Cleopatra says that I knew should get a laugh. I knew it was something witty that she was saying, and I couldn't do it. And we did the we did a hundredth performances, and on the hundredth, I got the laugh. How about that? That's I great. On the hundred and first, I wouldn't have got it again, but I did oh. get it for the hundredth. Yes. I love that. Well, I gather that uh, uh, you often enjoy little pranks and uh, inside uh, <laughs> jokes when you're working with uh, other actors. And, and I'm particularly interested in uh, the relationship you had with Tim Piggott Smith in, in that regard. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, how I miss him. Um, he did, as everybody knows, um, the, well, what was that wonderful? Television. The jewel in the crown. Yeah. The, what was it? Uh, the jewel in the crown. Was that the jewel in the crown? The, yes. The television the series. Yes. Yes, that's right. Where he played Merrick, didn't he? And he had a kind right, of yes. he had a kind of uh, uh, wooden hand, and he had a yeah. kind of black glove on it all the time, and yeah. it was for Peggy's 80th birthday. We all did, um, Peter Hall asked us to do something with Peggy at the OVIC that night. And we, so we had a great celebration of Peggy's life. And, um, and Tim came on to do a bit of Merrick in The Jewel and the Crown with his kind of hand. And he and I were in Antony Cleopatra at the time, he was playing Octavia Caesar. And I happened, why did I say this? I happened to say to him afterwards, I said, you know, there's something rather disturbingly attractive about that black wooden hand you've got in it. And so the next night, when we, we did that on a Sunday night, the next night we were back at the National doing Antony and Cleopatra, and he came down towards me in the last scene, Tim as Octavius Caesar, and with his hand beneath, well, you know the rest of it, his hand beneath his toga. And then suddenly he removed the toga to, to show me that he also had the black glove on, which was I mean, appalling, we behaved appallingly. But after that, in every play I ever did, the black glove appeared. The black yes. glove appeared in films, it went all over the world. <laughs> It went, it was in every play, it was given. He would send it to somebody who was in a play with me, or it was everywhere. It was on cushions. It, I got earrings of the black glove on. It <laughs> just it. lasted the whole of the rest of his life. Is that right? Yes. Did you see uh, King Charles the, the, the Third? I did. The, uh, yes. Did you admire that as much as I did? I, I oh, love that. I just thought it was sensational. Yes, and I was so glad that, that a film was made of it. Yes, which I so haven't was, seen. I haven't seen the film. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. And I understand that you don't watch a lot of your film work, is that correct? That uh, you, you... Yes, correct. And why is that? Well, because, you, you know, after it's there and it's done, it's too late to do anything about it. And you look and think, that's a terrible decision I made. And mm -hmm. that's a terrible decision I made. And that's another terrible, you know, and it's too late. You can't do anything about it. You can't get yes. up and say, 
don't look at this bit. Don't look at the next bit. <laughs> but you know, it's um, that's why you know the theatre is the really live thing that you get it another chance. Yes. Have you enjoyed uh, being in the James Bond series? Very, very much indeed. I loved it. I lo I had such a good time. Uh, I was given witty and wonderful things to say. I did object to the fact that I once said to Barbara and to Michael, um, everybody gets to go to glamorous places except me. I'm stuck in that office at the back there all the time. <laughs> yes. So in the very next one, we went to film at Stowe School and they gave me a big trailer which had Innsbruck along the side. And they said to me, you can never complain again because you've spent all that time in Innsbruck. So that's, <laughs> I did yes. get to go to Panama and Nassau. And so that was exciting. Yes. And uh, I'm just trying to think, what, what are the other uh, works that you have done that have given you the most satisfaction? Oh, John, mostly Shakespeare. Oh, really? Glad oh, to hear. no question. I mean, mm -hmm. I and during this lockdown, I just have tried to learn new things and I've tried to remember. I, I, I could do a huge amount of Midsummer Night's Dream for you on my own <laughs> and Twelfth Night and a few of the other others. And I just, it is wonderful that that keeps you going. And the sonnets, I mean, I, I, I really decided that at the beginning of this lockdown, I would, I would attend to learning the sonnets. Well, I haven't done that, have I? I've failed miserably. Have so you? I've only got a couple more weeks, I think, before we might come out of a bit of lockdown. So I better get on with it. Is there one sonnet in particular that you especially admire? Well, I, well, that, I, uh... there is, yes. I, it, well, I, I think it's probably a, a favorite, lots of people, is When in Disgrace with Fortune and Men's Eyes. Right, yes. I love it. 29, just, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a man's poem, I suppose. Yes. But nevertheless, it's just, I love it. You, you did a wonderful documentary about trees and how much you admire trees. And if I recall, you quoted three or four sonnets during that documentary as you were reflecting on how important trees are to our lives. Yes. I've, when I was a very small girl, I used to get very upset indeed about seeing those long, long lorries carrying tree trunks. I mean, irrationally upset. And... Uh, and my father used to explain that they've been cut down. But I, it, it upsets me a great, great deal to see trees being taken down of any size, really, from small, mm -hmm. large, you know, one in the village not long ago was cut down a huge, huge oak tree. And, you know, you think they've been going on much, much longer than us. And it seems so really destructive to take trees down. Yes, um, I couldn't agree more. I, it upsets and me. And what is happening in the Amazon, for example, must be very distressing to you. Yes, and we were in um, Borneo. I went to Borneo. Uh, oh, maybe that's the program you're talking about, John, the Borneo program, when when we went and and saw the you know, that they've taken down so much of the palm. Yes, I think that's that as well, um, yes. Yes, that's right. They, I mean, when you see that, and you see the height of those trees and being hauled up to the top of a tree that was three times the height of Nelson's column. Wow. It was absolutely wonderful. Yes, yeah. It was, it was magical. And seeing, you know, I've never, ever seen trees that height. You know, I, I fill my garden with trees, and especially to my friends who've died. Uh, I've many, many, many trees planted in the garden to them. But um, some of them I look and they're 400 years old. But then you look at those trees in, the, in Borneo and, you know, and, and you, you, it's hard to take in the size of them. Yes. So and we, we need them now to, to take carbon out of the air, among yes, other things. They're very important ecologically. 
They certainly are. And thank goodness we have, you know, we have David Attenborough, we have Greta Thunberg, and, you know, who drawn attention to things like many other people have, of course. But yes. how, are we starting to take a bit more notice? I hope so. I hope so as well. Me too. Yes. As, as, uh, as I was watching the, the documentary that, that included a lot of scenes from your own garden, one of the things that impressed me was the, the sign that trees communicate with one another. Yes. That you have fungi that... Uh, yes, underneath. Them. Yes. I never knew that. Did you know that, John? Yeah, I did not know that. And uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's an extraordinary discovery, isn't it? Yes, and, and if a tree is being attacked or anything, it, it, it sends the message right down and through yes. the body, all the way along to warn other trees. I mean, we yeah. don't know half of it, do we? No. And of course, Shakespeare anticipated it in uh, All's Well That Ends Well, and in that little uh, speech about the web of our life is of a mingled yarn. Yes, um, I, yeah. uh, Shakespeare, of course, thought of everything before we did. And, uh, he did. And that's why we keep going back to him, I suppose. And referring to him. And suddenly, yeah. and then you come to do the play, uh, another play, and you think, oh, that's what it means, of course, you know. Yes. He had to answer, didn't he? Right. Are you involved in uh, preparing young actors for the profession? Do you, I know you, you, you have uh, um, panels and so forth where you talk to drama school students and so forth. Is this something that's very important to, well, to it, keep yeah. the... I think, I think, John, it is important, but I, I'm, uh, I think, uh, Whenever you, whenever I can, I will offer help and and um, and say, well, in my experience, it's this way. But things, you know, are moving so quickly, and um, so I do less of that really now of mm -hmm. talking to students. But I'm very open to you know people coming and saying, and I will try and find an answer uh, if yes. I can. It may not be the right yes. one, of course. <laughs> yes. Um. How did you, did you just uh, kind of know how to, how to make a personality completely real when you were performing a role? Or is that something that, that took a little developing? How did that come about? It, it, it's not how it came, it's still coming about. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> it's every, you know, every single, I remember Michael once saying to me, when we were going to do Mr. and Mrs. Nobody uh, in the theatre, he said, oh, we're going to have the most wonderful time. Is It's very short, it'll make a lot of people laugh. And it was a play where he and I played all the parts. We also had Gary Fairchild and um, Penny Ryder in it as well, who, who said nothing but played a lot of parts. But we had to play all the other parts. And it, you know, and I can remember Michael saying to me beforehand, it's quite short, it'll make people laugh a lot, and it'll be glorious to do. Well, it was the most tiring thing I think I've ever done right. in my life. Yes. So something, something, I mean, I've always found this, but something that you think, oh, you think, yes, I think I know, I, yes, I think I know how this character should be. You can bet your bottom dollar that you won't know. That that's the one you'll be tripped up on. Yes. You know, there's always, always something to find out, always something new to find, always something to understand from other actors, always then a different way of playing something. Yes. Always a way of an audience laughing at one, one night and, and maybe then not the next. And you think, what on earth? How on earth have I mistimed that, you know? Yes. So it's never, ever, ever, you can't ever say you know how to do it, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Now, you've done some directing for Kenneth Branagh, haven't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a happy experience? Oh, well, no, I don't like it at all. Oh, you don't? Really? Interesting. No, I don't like it. Well, you know, actors gang up against you. They all uh, oh, okay. the are not included in the, uh, you, you're, you're standing there, um, being quite bossy about it, I suppose. <laughs> You're not included in the process so much. You're mm -hmm. meant to be. I mean, people like Richard, of course, Eyre and, and Peter Hall and Trevor Nunn and John Buck, they all, they all are in command of it. But I, I really, 
I really found it a bit alienating directing. I just wanted really to be up there trying to do it, you know. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's as if they gang up against you and they all go to the pub and don't tell you where they're going. You know, it's like that. Oh, all right. Um, well, you don't want to be the outsider, do you? But I, no, I, I, I'd rather be there mucking in with the others. Yes. Really. I, I recall when, uh, when, uh, when, the, when you helped us present the Gilgit Award to, to Ken at Middle Temple Hall in uh, January of uh, 2000. Yes. You told a story about going back to see the Much Ado About Nothing that you had directed because you wanted to provide a few notes. <laughs> and, uh, Ken Branagh, I know what you're going to say, John. And Ken yes. Branagh left in his costume at the end because he yes. didn't get the notes. <laughs> <laughs> so he, so he uh, evaded you, is that right? He, he did. All but right. I forgive him. I forgive him. I've yes. done so many things with him since. And in fact, yes. during this lockdown, um, I've done a film with him, which he's written. It's called Belfast, and it's about his childhood in Northern Ireland. Oh, um, how nice. Wonderful. And it was, it was hugely good fun to do. And we did it. We were tested every day, you know, and we all wore masks. But because my eyesight's so appalling, I used to go up to the wrong people a lot, wrong actors, talking yes. to wrong people off the set and not quite knowing who people are. But it was thrilling doing it. You know, I have the same eye problem that you do, uh, the macular degeneration. But yes. fortunately, uh, I found a doctor who provided injections early enough that it's pretty well arrested the decline in the eye with the wet degeneration. But I guess, do, was yours not caught early? I'm, I'm, yes, it was think... caught early. And I've had all the injections in my left eye. And that's okay. Yes. This one is hopeless. But still, oh, that's I... Too bad. You know, it means I can't do the crossword and I can't, I have to find another way of learning things, which is through my friends, thank goodness. And, you know. When, when you're learning a script or, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And that's what. What I haven't have. you done that, that you would really like to do? Is there, are there any uh, unfulfilled uh, aspirations for you? Um, um. I'd have liked to have designed something, but it's too late now. I would love to have designed a play. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Never mind. I would like to have learned another language fluently. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to have learned all the sonnets of Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My intention, and I failed. Yes. Miserably. Yes. Um, so I can't think. I mean, what? Meanwhile, you're developing a, uh, uh, a new um, uh, fan base for your work on TikTok with your, with your grandson, with Sam. Um, well, Sam's very good at it. He loves yes. it. And um, so we have a very nice time doing that, and it's kept me very busy and on my toes. Yes. I don't understand any of those things. I don't understand, I don't understand any, I mean, I barely understand this, John, that I'm talking to you and we can, you know. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, it's, it's very good, it's very good for me. And he's a task master. master. Is that right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And, and, and tell me what, uh, what Finty is now doing, your, uh, Sam's mother. Finty, my Finty is doing, at the moment, she is doing a, uh, a lot of audio books. She does mm -hmm. she's very, very good at them. She's been, she's got several awards for it and she's very good at them. And she has a facility that Mikey had. Michael used to be able to read, but I have none, I can't do it at all. Um, but not, not just because I can't see, but because I don't have that facility to read out loud, you know, I just can't do it. So she's mm -hmm. doing that. I think she's going to do a film later in the year. So that's very exciting. Yes. She's also been down at Sonning, which is a very beautiful little theatre, and she's been mm -hmm. doing things there. That was before the lockdown. 
-hmm. But you know, we've all tried to keep as busy as we can and obey the rules. I love that. Uh, am I correct that there is now a, a waste removal service that has on its lorry a <laughs> to you? <laughs> this is a Dame Foodie Dench. This Dame only Foodie happened Dench. last week, John. I love this. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yes, they're wonderful. They are terrific. Yes. And so yes. the wonderful yeah. thing about this whole thing is that it's brought out in, it, incredible kindness in people the whole of the lockdown people uh, I mean generally so thoughtful and so kind and people doing such inventive things you know because of not being able to right. do anything very normal yes and well, among other things things like uh, these uh, conversations online um, you know we're, we're actually doing uh, uh, we're embracing three different time zones with this program. Yes. Uh, so we're not only not in the same room, uh, you know, we're thousands of miles apart. Yes. And this, I think, is not something that would have happened before the lockdown. Am I right about that? I, I think it is. I've never yeah. done anything like it before. Um, and I, I did something called Staged with David Tennant and um, Michael Sheen. And it was so strange there because I said the difference is, I mean, I can just, I can see, I can see you, not clearly, but, but trying to do a, to do a play or act with, with, you know, with a, with a little square in front of you. It's very, very difficult indeed. Yes, yes. But perhaps very good for us that we have to learn and adapt. Exactly. So, so it's, um, there are silver linings, I suppose, or. Um, if you look for them. Yes, if you look for them, that's right. I think so. We had a wonderful friend who was a German judge called Hermann Barr. Um, and he, uh, we, my, Michael and I knew him right at the beginning of our, of our life together. Um, and he used to always say, always say, look for the pluses. And it's become a saying now in our family look for the mm -hmm. plus and they are there sometimes yes to find but it's a good maxim to live by i guess uh, duke senior in as you like it was the first to at least the first that i'm aware of to um suggest that sweet are the uses of adversity if you if you have the right approach to yes yes you can you can turn things to your advantage i think yes probably and it's quite good for us to have to have to have the imagination to do something and to do something yes. we don't necessarily, you know, uh, think that we would do. Yes. I, and, uh, I remember seeing a, uh, another little documentary in which you were talking about um, your experience with knee surgery. Oh, right. And uh, help people know how the how to handle all of that it was did that did you volunteer to do that or did someone no, I don't remember anything about it oh you don't okay no. I, <laughs> I think I, you I, were sitting in this chair I, and you, <laughs> yes <laughs> okay are yes. you sure it was me John I'm quite sure quite sure but uh, but maybe it was one of those forgettable moments we we can we're allowed to have a few of those aren't we <laughs> more and more I'm afraid yes uh, yes yeah, I have I've had knee surgery I've had a replacement on my right knee and an arthroscopy on my left knee mm -hmm. I mean they were wonderful but you know yes uh, yes all to pieces in bits yes <laughs> now you did a you were part of a uh an attempt to raise funds for actors who are out of work um uh, working with Richard Clifford and uh, Derek Jacobi and others. Uh, For others, yes. Um, did you enjoy that? Yes, very, very much indeed. Very much indeed. We do all sorts of things, you know, and, and I mean, when you think it's all right for us, but when you think of, for instance, all the people who, who are in the theatres in London, for instance, and it's all the stage doormen I've known and all the crew and all the wig 
uh, makers and um, and all uh, just the cleaners of theatres and everybody. You know, we complain that we're not in work, but they the theatres are, are dark and they're not in work anymore. And some of those stage doormen, you know, have been 40 years or so. Yes, right. So this, this, this is to do with everybody, to do with the, with the theater and this business, yes. Yes. It, it's a good and thoughtful thing to do, I think. Absolutely, we'll do absolutely. It. Quite right that we should do it. Yes. Well, I know that um, there are a number of people who have questions for you. And I'm wondering if maybe uh, we could ask Nadine to come back on. Yes. Uh, and um, let us know what, uh, what people want to ask you in addition to what you and I have talked about. And whether we can answer. <laughs> or, or whether we can answer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, there are indeed so many questions. Um, I've chosen a few. Um, so there is Tova asking, what are the projects you would like to do in the future? Oh, Tova, keep working, keep working and keep learning new things and having the challenge of um, not being cast as um, somebody uh, of my age in a wheelchair who can't move. <laughs> but, um, you know, perhaps I will play um, uh, somebody who has to learn to walk the tightrope or something, you know, <laughs> just do new things, learn new things. Um, a question from Linda and Paul. Dame Judy, how do you feel theater is going to come back from the pandemic and what are the hopes for it? Um, well, it is gradually coming back a bit now. Well, I'm speaking about here. I can't speak for anywhere else, but gradually it's coming back here uh, and uh, things are opening when we're allowed, going to be allowed to meet in gardens and things like that. I mean, I haven't seen my daughter since Christmas. Um, and so uh, I think that it, it'll gradually go and they'll watch the, the, uh, the, the numbers and see what's happening. And then maybe with any luck by the end of the year, uh, I imagine we might be restored to some more normal state. Yeah, I'm touching wood. I'm touching wood. Yeah, same here. I thought it was. In, I thought it was encouraging that the first uh, person in the United Kingdom to receive the vaccination was William Shakespeare. Isn't that wonderful? And at the <laughs> same time, John, he wrote King Lear, so he wasn't doing too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's actually a question along those lines from Carol, who is asking or wondering which works of Shakespeare should receive more acclaim, in your opinion? Oh, um, yeah. Oh. Karen, that's an impossible question. Impossible. There are a couple of the plays that I don't know at all. Uh, I just think that one, you should see them and you should see them in all forms that you can. And um, and just listen to how remarkable he was, and because you can go to any work of Shakespeare, and you will find you will find a a very very concise um, uh, explanation of some kind of emotion or something that you have felt yourself. That's very badly said, but I expect you've got the gist of it. You know, he was able to sum up so brilliantly how we feel about everything, ev about every single emotion. Right. Um, question from Joe. What role would be your dream role, excluding those you've already performed? I don't know. Somebody very, very tall and young. And <laughs> 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 They have to act it very, very, very well. Um, I don't know. I never know till it till it turns up. I just hope it goes on turning up. Yeah. Um, Judy, uh, uh, with regard to Shakespeare, you were saying how wonderful, how amazing he is. I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson 
comparing Shakespeare to other great writers said, he was inconceivably wise, the others conceivably. Oh. Does that work for you? Absolutely it does. That's why we continue to make discoveries. We, 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 we never feel that we can exhaust what Shakespeare has to give us. No, no. And the more we experience, and the more then you come back to the play, and you rediscover something that he said about it, something that hasn't occurred to you for, for yes. ever before. And suddenly you think that has summed it up completely. Mm -hmm. mm. We're lucky. <laughs> we are indeed. Nadine? Do you have any other questions? John, I know we had a few as well. No, I'm go ahead. Through yes. the chat, there's so many. Um, here's a question from Kate. Uh, what was the feeling process like at the beginning of your career? Kate is a fellow actor. What was, what was the what? Nadine? The feeling or process, I think how you would approach a role. Um, like, like it is, just like it is now. We were, I went to the Central School and um, we were taught by some wonderful people wonderful wonderful people um and so you learnt you learnt it like in a way the process like an exercise but then you have to put it into proper terms when you come to uh when you come to rehearsing and and understanding a play and um what is so glo well i have to speak actually from 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 the point of view of shakespeare mostly because that's my passion and what i've done most of is that you know things can suddenly um, suddenly occur to you? You can hear something in a play, as if it were for the first time, which will then inform your your performance. That's why going on and doing plays in repertoire with other plays, you know, that's how it grows and how how you can add things as you go through, or perhaps take some away. But it it is a it's an inf it, it's a process that you just learn as you go along, and you learn a lot, of course, from from other actors and the people you act with. Of course, uh, a question from another Carol who would like to know. Um, oh, I lost my question. Apologies. Um, who would like to? <laughs> A lot of people would like you to read a sonnet. Um, no pressure there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but just as an aside. But um, the question from Carol. I do apologize. If you could play. Oh, do you regret turning down any roles? Um, I don't think I've turned down many. I think I've taken them. <laughs> I think I've taken them. I'm so, I'm so always so pleased to be asked to do something. Um, uh, I don't think I've turned many down. Right. I gather, Judy, when, when uh, somebody is pitching a role to you, mm -hmm. uh, you don't feel a need to read this one. That no, I like simply... that. yes, John. I like. I've always, I've always liked that. That, that uh, somebody comes down and tells me the story. I just love it. I, I love to. I mean, not particularly from my standpoint either. From, from, so that you, you hear the story all in one go. I've always liked that. Yeah, one, of, one of the roles of one of your fairly recent roles that I thought was very moving was. Philomena, and how, could you talk a little bit about how that came about? Yes, I, um, yes, I was asked to do the, that by Steve Coogan, mm -hmm. uh, who'd written about it, and Martin Sixsmith, who was the person in it, you know, who, 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 um, who, who uh, formed the attachment to, to Philomena Lee, and then, it's it, it it's oh, it's such a touching story, but 
the good fortune about that was that I man I met her. I met yes. Filena just before we started filming. And she is the most, was the most uh, really unbelievably engaging, uh, upbeat woman with a wonderful sense of humor. And it gave me a totally different kind of viewpoint in a way on, on Philomena and her story, that tragic story. She had a wonderful attitude though, just wonderful. And that didn't detract in any way from the grief she felt about losing her son. Yes. It was, it was inspirational for me to have met her beforehand. Well, it was in an inspirational role that you played. You just did a beautiful job with it. It was one of the most deeply moving films that oh, I've ever seen. Very nice of you, John, to say. It was lovely to do it with uh, Stephen Frears, my friend Stephen. Yes. You've done several films with him, haven't you? Yes, yes we, have. Mm -hmm. we have. And a television originally called Going Gently, ah. which was about two men in a cancer ward and I was the sister looking after them. That was a long time ago, mm -hmm. long time. Fulton Mackay and um, <gasps> I'm going to dry on this name who's very, very well known. I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll suddenly we, shout yes. it out. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll put a footnote here. <laughs> Nadine? Yes, um, along those lines, there actually there's a question from Dean. Do you find it harder playing an existing person, i.e. Philomena, or fictional characters? Um, well, fictional characters, um, somebody can't come and say, oh, I knew that person, and they're not at all like that. That's the advantage. You have to be very, very... Uh, you have to be very precise about knowing about a character. It's like Iris Murdoch. I had to really find out about, I was a huge fan of hers, but I had to find out about her very much before playing it. So <coughs> you have to be, you have to be correct about those things. Um, but if it's not, if it's a, if, if it's a, if that's, if it's non-fictional, but if it's fictional, of course, you can make up your own mind about that person's attitude to something. Uh, within the framework of the play. Yes. What role, so what role did you enjoy most researching? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Do you do a lot of research or do you depend on others to, I, for the information I, you need? I depend on the director and mm -hmm. I depend on a lot of other people telling me. Yes. And now because I can't read, I definitely rely on other people telling me. Yes, right. And hearsay. Uh, and um, you know, you, and, and, and hoping that the interpretation of what you do, especially if it's a non-fictional person, is true to life. Right. I think we have time for two more questions. This is a question from John. Um, do you like working on new roles? Yes, it all depends. It all depends on the director and what the role is. And especially, as I said before, especially if it's something that isn't an 86 year old woman <laughs> who, who can't move about much and can't see. I don't want to play that part, <laughs> playing that part too much at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but, it, you know, something new and something challenging and something different. I love the thought of it. I just love the thought of it. There's something completely different. And our very final question. Oh, this, okay. From H.O. Uh, is there anything about being an actor that makes you afraid or nervous now? Yes, I'm afraid and nervous every time I do. I have to do something, and 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 uh, 
having to get up and make a speech for me is a absolute killer. I'm I'm I really hate it. That's why, in a way, this makes it much easier because I I can't see anybody. I can just see some you know things, and that in a way makes it easier. Um, <coughs> but I've always been very frightened of having to get up and and say something and make a speech about uh, you know. Unless, of course, it's written by William Shakespeare, in which case I find it. <laughs> <laughs> I think John would agree um, on that one. And on that note, um, on behalf of the National Arts Club, I would like to thank you so much for joining us for this conversation, which I thought was charming and lovely and absolutely perfect. Um, thank you. And thank you to everybody who joined us. We had close to uh 3000 viewers Gracious. yes on the other side of the screen Gracious. um <laughs> oh, geez, i can't see you i'd have been <laughs> front oh i enjoy Jenny, i understand there's a uh... so, thank you and i'll turn it over to john to really close out um this thank event you, thank you so thank much thank you nadine uh judy i understand there is a rap artist uh who has uh coined the phrase stage <laughs> is it lethal bizzle yes and uh tell us what stay dench means um uh i think it means i think it means stay cool stay cool i but like it may it. not of course it may not yeah. There may be another meaning that I don't know. <laughs> yes. Stay cool. I hope that's what it means. Stay cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, um, I understand you don't like being called a national treasure. I don't know. Are you willing to be global treasure? Would that be all right? No. 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 <laughs> Robbing actor will do me, John. Jobbing actor. We yeah. hope you keep being a jobbing actor for a long, long time because we enjoy your work so much and it means so much to us. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. It's lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you and thank you so much, Judy. Keep well. Keep well. Bye now. Bye now. <laughs>